today I'm going to show you how to get this old fridge into a fermentation chamber. I'm also going to show you how to wire and what the functions are on the STC 1000. So I got this fridge off Kijiji for 20 bucks. It's pretty big. I can fit a carboy most of the way, but I need to remove some of that door molding. Now to remove the evaporator coil holders, there's one screw in the back, and once you do that and remove those two visible ones, you can easily just slide the holders out and you know, you'll have some room to work with. To remove the door molding, you just push that door seal up and then you can undo all of the screws and once you do that, the door molding will come off. I'm actually gonna bypass the thermostat, so I'm gonna pull that off and I'll deal with that later. Now to bend the evaporator coils, just go slow and steady. You don't want these to crack, because if they do, all the Freon or the cooling chemical will leak out and you won't have a working fridge anymore. So just go slow and steady with these. To cut the door molding so that you can save some space and all you need is the frame, just go get one of those rotary tools from Walmart for about 25 bucks, cut it down, and you're just left with the frame. Then you pop that frame and seal it back on, do up the screws, and there you go. You gotta seal it back on the footage. Now I'm gonna cut the ground to the thermostat, cut that white wire because I don't need it, and I'm just gonna tie the brown and blue wires together. Remember it's blue and brown together. And now bypass the thermostat, so now it will go all the time, but it's, the temperature is actually going to be controlled by the STC 1000. And I'll go over how to get that all worked into this in a bit. But that green wire is the ground that connects to the evaporator coil in the back. It's pretty important that you have ground. So just throw some duct tape over the wires and uh, put a good amount on so that there's no way that liquids could get in there and short anything out. And once you do that, you have now bypassed the thermostat. It's really easy to do. I'm just going to throw the screws back into the holders. I'm not going to do up that back one anymore because I don't really need to because the, the coils will move around a little bit. This is the schematic that I'm going to use to do the STC 1000. This is the hot side and this is the cold side. You just want to break off the cold or the hot side uh, tab on the outlet. That's the red wire I'm going to use for heating, blue wire for cold, neutral, and three hot leads. And then I'm also going to need a plug to plug the STC 1000 in. And I just do the label everything so I know what I'm going with. Connect the ground, connect the neutral, blue to red, another neutral on the other side. And then I'm going to solder all the hot leads together. It doesn't really matter, they're all running in parallel. Wrap that up in some more electrical tape. And then connect everything together. There is a schematic on the back of the STC 1000, so you'll know where everything goes. On the far side, it's the cooling. On in the middle is the heating, and then the sensor and the power. I'll show you where everything goes in just a second. So that's the cooling. That goes blue, black, red, black, and then the sensor, doesn't really matter how it goes in there, neutral, and then power. And then do everything up, put that uh, socket cover on. Now to program your SDC 1000, it's pretty easy. You hold down the S button, F1 is for your temperature setting, you can go up, and you can go down. and then you push standby and it sets the temperature. And then when you push up and down, the up button is the temperature it's set at, 
and the down button is the difference between when the SCC 1000 is going to go on. F2 is the difference. You can set that to however you want to. The lowest that will go is 0.3. So that's when the sensor or when the SCC 1000 will go on. And then you push down by and that sets it again. F3 is the compressor delay in minutes. So I left that at three minutes. And then F4 is if your sensor is out, then you can adjust it for in here, uh, up and down if you find it. But I measured my sensor and it was very accurate, so I just left it. So just make sure to use a thermal well in your beer or wine because that's how you're going to get a really accurate temperature. You want to measure inside the vessel and not outside of the vessel. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Please like my video and leave some comments.